All right, let's hop into it. Today we got y'all boys with another NBA tier list. We gonna get to spamming these joints, I promise. We got y'all with the shooting guards today. Y'all y'all like the point guards. Now I tried to get an actual more cohesive tier list for the other like positions. Shooting guards, small four, power four center. So if you guys do want that, just make sure to like the video. I got a team tier list. I'm gonna try to get out before the season start. I'm gonna try to have a big tier list with all the NBA players updated like I did as soon as the season ended last year. So yeah. Uh, let's hop into it. So we got the same tiers. Best is going to be pretty much who I think is the best shooting guard. Superstar, if there are any superstars, but let's go over my criteria of a superstar. This can be semantics, but based off what I think a superstar is, an MVP caliber player, all-star is an all-star caliber player. You don't necessarily have to make the all-star, but just think about it. It's like 13 spots per uh, conference, so that's 26 players. But to be all-star caliber, I think I said last time, it's probably about 40 all-star caliber players in the league. So as long as you like a top, at least like a, a top 50 player, I'm not too mad at it. But I'm going to just stick to top 40 for now. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, you know, I, I ain't really trying to go that crazy, you know? So, yeah, we're going to leave it at that number for now. Um, Yeah, uh, high-level role player, pretty much a role player that you really just need on your team to win a championship. Simple as that. Um, or just good enough that's right either on the brink of being an all-star like they could even be better than some of the all-star caliber players because they're just so good of a player all around or at specific things so yeah i inflated numbers pretty much inflated numbers guy elite specialist pretty much people that are elite at pretty much one thing and then key role players that's pretty much like a it's pretty much like an off-brand version of a high level role player so yeah then you got glue guy i was gonna have bench warmer but like I don't think any of these guys are bench warmers, so let's hop into it. All right, best. Oh, Devin Booker, shooting guards. I ain't gonna lie. I think D Book has been the best shooting guard for a couple years now. I know people still like that at the base with Donovan Mitchell, but I'm seeing through all that as Devin Booker has become a better defender. Devin Booker, in my opinion, is a, just a much more polished scorer. Devin Booker, in my opinion, is a much more polished playmaker. Devin Booker, in my opinion, can play better on ball, off the ball. I don't really know what else you really give in D. Mitch besides three-point shooting and athleticism. So I would have to say D. Book is the best shooting guard in the league. Like, we can just get that out the way off of it. Now, I didn't set this up. That's just how this ended up doing. Now, Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, in my opinion, is a superstar caliber player. Um, he's either at the back end or at the top end of All-Star. But I'll give him that. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. I think D. Mitch is like a top 15 player at this point in his career. So I'll give him that. Um, yeah. Um, Paul George. Paul George at this point in his career, I think he's just all-star caliber. I think he's like a top end all-star caliber player. But, yeah, he's just all-star caliber at this point, I say. Um, Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy, in my opinion, is a high-level role player. He does a lot of the little things. He does a lot of the things that you really want. Um, it's kind of pretty much that simple. Bradley Beal. All right, Bradley Beal is tough because he's like, I'll give him, I'll give him All Star out of respect, but he's like back end All Star for me. So yeah, Bradley Beal All Star. Jalen Brown. Let me make sure. Let me let me make sure this is consistent. Let me make sure this is consistent with what I think. Yeah, JB is going to be all-star, and I'm going to put JB here. No, I'm putting JB here. He's at the top in the all-star. That's where I would put him. Actually, D-Mix, you got to bump down. I'm looking at this. There's no way I can put you superstar. I capped, I capped heavy on the top 15. Nah, I, I capped heavy. Yeah, 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 all-star, all-star. Um, Jordan Poole, Jordan Poole in my opinion. I think Jordan Poole going to have a pretty solid season this year, but... Yeah, okay. So inflated numbers don't really mean you're a bad player. It's just pretty much guys that I think gonna have really good numbers on bad teams. I think that's literally what Jordan Poole gonna be this year. He could like on the Warriors, I think he's like a, a more so to a, like in between like an all star caliber player and high level role player because he don't really do a lot. But like he's so important to that team, especially when Curry was getting hurt. 
I think Jordan Poole was so important to that team and so valuable. I'm interested to see how the Warriors stay afloat this year when Curry get hurt because it's it's inevitable. Curry going to miss at least 20 games. It's, 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 it happens every year. People don't talk about it, but it happens every year. So I'm really interested to see what, hey, maybe Curry play eight, all 82. Maybe, hey, knock on wood, but maybe, maybe he play all 82. Let me not say that he going to miss games because I don't want no injuries, but I'm just saying what's happened in previous years. Um, Austin Reeves, that's the epitome of a high-level role player. Austin Reeves or Josh Giddy. I think most people would probably say Austin Reeves, but I think I think I'd rather Josh Giddy. I think I'd rather Josh Giddy. Uh, Marcus Smart, that's another guy that is definitely a high level role player. But it's bro, I'm gonna be honest, it's kinda tough to rank. <laughs> Josh Giddy, Austin Reeves, Marcus Smart. Who is the best out of those three? I think Marcus Smart is the by far best defender of the guys there. But after that, it's a little iffy. You know what I'm saying? It's a little iffy, in my opinion. I'll say Marcus Smart. I'm going to say Josh Giddy is better than him because I think Josh Giddy is going to take a jump this year. Austin Reeves could take a jump this year, too. I'm going I'm to I'm low-key put, low put Austin Reeves above him because I think Austin Reeves is a little bit more important. I think when he was on Boston, I think Austin Reeves was still more important than the for the Lakers, and I think this year he's going to be more important for the Lakers than Marcus Smart is going to be for the Grizzlies. So I'm going I'm to I'm I'm put him right there. Uh, Tyler Hero, um, I think Tyler Hero is going to have a pretty big jump. Uh, not a pretty big jump. I think he's going to be pretty good this year for what he's going to do. I think he, his role is going to be a little bit more defined. And it's going to be a lot easier for him to play in his role. For the past couple of years, it's been a little weird, especially playoff-wise, but I think a lot of the players in the Heat this year are going to have defined roles. I think that's been a real important thing from a, from the uh, Heat camp, from the, everybody speaking. I think everybody's kind of just locked in on what their role exactly is. And that's kind of been like a, a question mark for everything. Like, who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Who's going to be, you know what I'm saying? I, I think that's a lot more locked in this year than ever. So, yeah. I um, honestly think people kind of sleeping on some of the things that the Heat have done in the offseason, even though the people know all the things we ain't doing the offseason. I ain't going to cap feet for it boy, hey, we ain't even gonna get into that. But let's go ahead and put uh, Tyler Hero. Uh, I'm really contemplating between Tyler Hero and Josh Giddy. I think Josh Giddy is a better all around player. I think Hero is a better shooter and scorer. I do expect Hero to be a better defender this year, though. Because Hero has gotten better defensively every year so far. But I actually expect him to be much better this year. He, he seems to be motivated. Um, if you play on the Heat, you have to play defense. So I'm gonna put ah it's tough between these two because I think they both gonna take a pretty big, decent jump. I think Reed's gonna take a pretty decent jump, but I'm gonna put Hero right here for now. I'm gonna put him right here for now. Out of no bias, I I could even see it as high as this. I'm not gonna lie. If I'm being re if I'm really being biased, if I'm really being biased, I can see it as high as that. But I ain't gonna go that crazy. I ain't gonna let the Heat fan in me go that crazy. Um, Grayson Allen. Okay, Grayson Allen on the Bucks. That's like a high-level role player because he's very important to that team because they need that shooting. If he was on the Bucks with Dame, he would still be down here. On the Suns, he's down here. You know what I'm saying? He's a key role player. He's going to play some solid defense and be a good shooter. That's going to be really important on the Suns. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I say is the Suns don't really need guards. They got Bradley Beal and D-Book. They don't really need guards. That's why I don't understand why people want them to get a PG. Like, they don't need guards, bro. They don't need guards. They need they need wings. They need bigs. They need they need that. So, I don't know what people are talking about with that. But, yeah, I'm going to say he's a key role player. I think he could be as high as high-level role player, but I think he's a key role player. Uh, Anthony Edwards. Ant. I have Ant for this upcoming year to be right here. I think out of all the people in his tier... Um, I think D. Mitch as an overall offensive player is better, but as an overall player, Ant is just kind of like because of the defense. Ant clears, he clears him on defense. I think Ant at this point in his career is even probably a better defender than Paul George. Um, if we had to rank D. Book and everybody in All Star defensively, I think it would go Ant, Paul George, J. B. D. Book. And then you can pick whoever you want between D. Mitch and Bradley Beal. I'm not gonna lie, you can really pick that that one. I I really don't I really don't care. I don't know that that one is up in the air. But when it comes to 
when it comes to Ant offensively, I think he's going to take a jump this year. Um, I expected Timberwolves to be better than last year. And yeah, I think based off my expectations, I think he's going to be better. Um, I think he's going to be closer to a top 15 player this year than D Mitch. I'm not overrating him and saying he's going to be top 15, but I think he's going to be closer to it. I think they both going to be top 20, but I think he's going to be closer to top 15. I don't think they're either one of going to be top 15, though, I'm going to be honest. Herb Jones. Herb Jones. Okay, Herb Jones is an elite specialist, but if he can knock his jump shot down more this year, he could be high-level role player. They just need him to knock his jump shot down a little bit more to be high-level role player, but I'll put him at elite specialist because of his defense. He's an elite defender, in my opinion. Um, forgot, bro, from the Knicks. Bro be knocking that joint down, though, when he play the Heat. I swear he does. I swear, bro, don't miss when he plays the Heat. Bro, his name is Quentin Grimes. Bro, his name was flipping my head, bro. I, bro, Quentin Grimes, he be hooping when he play the Heat. Bro, be sticking D, knocking down jumpers. I ain't gonna lie. He be blowing me when he play the Heat. But I think he's right. Uh, to be real, I think he's just really a key role player. He's literally like he's literally like Grayson Allen, but a better defender. I think Grayson Allen is a better shooter. I think he, Grayson Allen is a better scorer. I think Quint, Quentin Grimes is just a better defender. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how I rank those two. Um, Gary Harris. Gary Harris is really, really weird to rank because I don't think Bro is even going to play for real this year. Yeah, I don't even think Bro is going to even play for real this year. So with that being said, I'm going to put him glue guy. But I think he's better than Quentin Grimes. I'll put him right here. Tyrese Maxey. All right, this is going to be the hottest take of this whole thing. I'm putting Maxi over Bradley Beal. I can say that with full assurance. I can say that with full assurance. I, I've been talking about Maxi since he was a rookie. Maxi was far better than anybody expected coming into the league. People was trying to say his three ball was going to be the, the biggest question mark in his offense. Bro came into the league purling that joint, bro. Pulling. Like, all type of different types of threes. Like, he had the bag on the threes. I don't know what was going on with the scout report on bro. But, yeah, he came to the league pulling. I think this year without Harden, he's going to take a whole nother step offensively. So I'm really interested to see how that's going to look with uh, him and Embiid without Harden. I can't wait to see it if it does happen. And, yeah, I'm going to put him in all-star caliber. I think he's going to be in that echelon. Uh, so, yeah. That's where I want to put Hero. But I think – I just think Max is just a little bit more athletically gifted. And I can say that with full assurance, and people will say I'm not I'm not being biased because I hate the I hate the 76ers. So like you can't tell me I'm being biased putting Maxi there. I, you can't tell me that. Uh, Mikael Bridges. I think Mikael Bridges is getting a little gassed. I think defensively, he's for surely gonna be one of the best defenders in the league. Offensively, um, I think he showed what he can do. I need to see it for a full year before I give him that full full force push to All Star. I would definitely say by far the best player and high level role player though. He's like the by far most all around, I guess maybe not all around. I think I get I would say he's the best defender. Score is debatable. I don't think he's that great of a passer. Offensive player, he's not the best offensive player either. But I think he would be the best player and high level role player, if that makes sense. So yeah, I would put him there. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes all the way up to here. I wouldn't be surprised at that. Because if he can continue what he did, scoring the ball to end the year, then yeah, he's going to probably be right, maybe even right here, honestly. He probably is about right here if he continues what he was doing to end the year. But for right now, to be safe, I'm going to put him high-level role player. And for any Simons. And for any Simons, in my opinion, I don't know what his role is going to be this year. I think he's going to start the two-guard and Shaden Sharp is going to be like the is going to be like the, oh, but Shane Shark can play the three, can't he? So he may actually start. Anthony Simons may actually start. If Anthony Simons can start, I'm not going to lie. It really depends on how much, how many touches is Aiden taking away from everybody. Because you got to think about it. Scoop got a hoop. It's his rookie year. He's supposed to be like the new franchise player. Shaden Sharp is going to have a big jump this year. Uh, DeAndre Ayton. They still got Jeremy Grant unless, as, until they probably gonna trade him too. They may even trade Anthony Simons to be honest. But 
I'm interested to see what this is going to look like. I think Air Freddy, I think the line is going to look something like School and Freddie Simons, Shaden Sharp, um, Jeremy Grant, and hey, that's not a terrible starting lineup. If I had to say where I think Air Freddy going to be, Air Freddy could definitely be as high as like right here. He could be as high as right here, even maybe here if you want to go crazy. If he is looked at on that team as like the best scorer, which could happen. But I think they're going to try to give Aiden that love because they don't want another son situation. But if he's not, I'm going to put him right here. I'm going to put him right here. I'm going to put him right here. Um, Because I could definitely see Scoot getting i can see him taking a back turn i can see him going from being like the second option to like damn near the third option even with dame off the team because if aiden getting his touches scoot gonna get it he gonna be a pg so i'm interested to see how that work out so i'm gonna put him right here for the for safety purposes um kevin hoarder i think kevin hoarder is a pretty high level role player in my opinion he's a pretty solid passer pretty solid defender one of the best shooters in the league i'll put him high level role player um he's just solid at everything besides shooting so I'll give him that. Um, Devin Vassell. I think Devin Vassell honestly could have a really big year this year. I, I like Devin Vassell a lot. I like Devin Vassell a lot. I want to go crazy and put him, like, right here, to be honest. But I'm going to put Devin Vassell right here out of safety purposes. I'm going to be safe right there and secure. I'm going to put him there. Scotty Barnes. Um, Scotty Barnes, if he don't take a jump this year, I don't, I think this is like a now or never year for Scotty Barnes. I remember Ricky year, they were saying he's better than Evan Mobley. Then they walked that back. Now we don't know if he's better than, um, Kay Cunningham, J Jalen Green, or Evan Mobley, or Franz Wagner. I think Franz Wagner is just clearing away the best player in that draft right now, in my opinion. But if you want to go for the next person, be Evan Mobley. I think K could take a jump this year after being injured last year. I think Jalen Green could take a jump this year. Man, Scotty Barnes got to he got to position himself this year. He was supposed to be based off that first year, that Ricky year. He was supposed to be the best guy. I'm not gonna lie. Based off that first year, he had the defensive versatility, the offensive versatility. The only thing he really couldn't do was shoot. So is this is this is the year for uh, Scotty to really show it? So. Um, if Scotty can really put it all together, he could go all the way up here to here. He could be all star caliber. He could be a top forty player. So that's what I see Cade as. Like if Cade was on here, he'd be right here. I think he can be around Cade if he can really play to his potential. But if not, I will put Scotty like right here, to be honest. I'll put him like right there. Um Jordan Clarkson. I think Jordan Clarkson is another guy. He's going to be on a bad team. He's going to be able to get his stats. I don't think he's going to be as good as Jordan Poole. Like, Jordan Poole would probably be pretty high on his high-level role player. But based off this year, I think he's just going to be inflated numbers on a bad team. Terry Rozier, another guy inflated numbers on a bad team. He may even have better numbers than Jordan Clarkson, though. But, yeah. Zach Levine. Zach Levine is an all-star caliber player. I would put Zach Levine right here. Right there. I believe. Right? Yeah, that's about where I would have Zach Levine. Um, Davis Caldwell Pope. Davis Caldwell Pope, like an elite 3 and D guy. Like, he's elite at being a 3 and D guy. So I'll put him as an elite specialist. I don't think he's like a high level role player because besides 3 and D, on the, I'm going to be honest, on the Nuggets, the way they, Jokic can uh, give you a lot of things, he be, he be going in that midi. But like, if he's not on the Nuggets, he's not that. So I'm going to just leave it here. For now, Jay Nivey. Jay Nivey, um, summer league was rough, but I had high hopes coming off to his first rookie year. Um, I seen some Rico Hines things, it didn't look too good either. So, yeah, I liked what I saw last year. The games I did see, but he kind of scared me. I will say that. But with that being said, I think Jay Nivey. Is gonna be potentially the third or fourth best player because K gonna play by Donovich, um, Jalen Duran. He could be the third or fourth player there. It depends on who you, how you feel about by Donovich, how you feel about Duran. But he could be as high as the second. I don't know if that how likely that is, but he could. 
um, the athleticism. I like it. But I'm going to put him right here with Anthony Simons. Actually, no, I'll put it right there. Actually, he's going to be inflated numbers. He's going to be on a really bad team. Getting his stats. I ain't going to cap. All right. Um, Clay Thompson. I don't think the Warriors are going to be that good this year. With that being said, I don't think the Warriors are going to be that good. Personally, Clay Thompson. He's not all star. He's not all star caliber player. Clay, I'm not gonna lie. Clay at this point in his career, damn near is like the epitome of an elite spec. Like he is damn near the epitome of an elite specialist. But he's so elite at shooting that it like it kind of converges into him being a great score still too. So it's kind of tough. But like right now he's not he's not he's not a good defender anymore. And outside of defense all he really was good for was playing off ball and shooting. You know what I'm saying? Whether that be mid-range score shooting or three-point shooting. But he, he's such a good shooter in that mid-range and three-point ability that he is a great scorer. He's he's a great scorer. So I can't really put bro in key role player. But I'm gonna be honest. I think it's been gas and clay for a couple. I gotta keep it a bean with how I honestly feel. I'ma put clay right here. I ain't gonna cap you. I'ma put clay right there. That may throw a couple people off, but that's honest truth of how I feel about it. Be honest. Now, if Clay's better than this and he actually plays to how people talk about him, people talk about him like he's right here with Paul George to this day. Then the Warriors are gonna be much better, but I don't think that. So yeah. Jalen Green. Jalen Green could be an all-star caliber player this year, to be honest. To be honest with you, he could be an all-star caliber player. He could make that jump. Emu Yudoka coming over there. They got an actual real point guard over there. They got some type of sort of direction coming in over there. I think he could actually take that jump. I think he's going to be a better defender this year. I think he's going to be more efficient this year. Um, I can see Jalen Green being better than Bradley Beal, to be honest. I can see it, to be honest. I honestly could see that. I could see it. I can see it. That's what I honestly think he could be. Um, I think this is Andrew Nimhard from the Pacers. Hopefully I got bro name right. He's cool. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's a key role player. He's cool. Um, DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray, in my opinion, is an all-star caliber player. I'm going to put him right there. Right there. I think as a defender, he just clears everybody else that was there. And as an offensive player, he's going to pretty much give you 20, and like at least six. So I, I got to give him at least an all-star. He's going to be an all-star caliber player next year. Um, Gary Trent. Gary Trent is an interesting one. I like his shooting ability. I like his defensive ability. It's just inconsistent. That's just the thing. It's just inconsistent. Night in, night out. It's just not always there. But with that being said, I personally believe Gary Trent to be I'm put him in a least specialist right there with Kent Tavis call with Pope. And I don't think there's, I think if there was a superstar, it would be D-Book. That's it. That's the only person I could see having an MVP caliber year. If you want to say Ant, though, that's low-key a sleeper pick for an MVP, bro. Because I think Ant, if the, I'm going to be honest, if the Timberwolves can have a better season than people are expecting, I think it would be because of Ant taking a significant jump. So, that's not too far out of the what's it called. That's not too impossible, to be honest. Because we've seen this, the Kings take a significant jump last year. And you've seen what that did for Sabonis stock, for De'Aaron De Fox stock. So if Ant can have a similar season to what the Kings had last year, if not even better, get like, because I don't, I, don't I don't know how good the Grizzlies going to be this year without with missing um, Ja the first 25 games. They could get as high as the second seed next year. So that's interesting. But... Yeah, um, yeah, 
That's the best. There's no superstars, so we can delete that. There's no glue guys, so we can delete that as well. That is my shooting guard tier list. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! I mean, the guy that's in inflated numbers, if you was actually listening, which you probably wasn't, those are guys that's going to be on bad teams, but they're going to get their stats. Pretty much. Those are guys that's going to be on bad teams that's going to get their stats, in my opinion. You could say Devin Marcel, but I don't know. He's not going to average like 20. I think like all these guys can average 20. Like, I don't think Devin Marcel is going to average 20. I don't think he's going to average 20. I think they're a little bit more well-rounded, too, than Terry Rozier. I mean, nigga, you think everybody's a superstar. If you think all these niggas are superstars, I'm tired. I'm sorry to tell you. I don't think they're superstars. I'm really going to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you, bro.